Welcome back to our channel. Today, we talk about a topic that's been on a lot of people's minds. What happened to SpaceX's ambitious and ultimately abandoned mission to transform ordinary oil rigs into colossal launch platforms for their Starship program? Firstly, let's talk about why SpaceX considered the option of using oil rigs as launch platforms. In the past few years, SpaceX has grown from launching rockets at a Texas dirt field to successfully launching the most sophisticated rocket prototypes ever produced. The exciting developments down in Boca Chica have been mesmerizing to watch, and it's clear that SpaceX are now all in on making Starship a success. They intend to launch a fleet of Starships to the Moon, Mars, and even other locations on Earth in the future, from points all over the globe. They intend to run Starship similarly to an airliner, with several daily flights and hundreds of passengers per vehicle. Many, however, believe that this promising future is simply unreal. A fully assembled Starship will be very noisy when it launches. Even from 8 kilometers away, the Super Heavy Booster's approximately 33 Raptor engines would produce sound at a decibel level of about 112. It's like having someone standing right next to you and wielding a chainsaw. This sound level might be extremely dangerous in addition to being extremely disruptive to the nearby residents. As you get close to the Starship, the sound waves intensify to the point where they can break through windows and cause structural damage. SpaceX considered that they will need to relocate the launch and landing pads far from populated areas if they want to launch Starships as frequently as they have planned. Early renders of Starship show a sleek-looking launch platform several miles offshore. The idea is that Starships would launch and land from these platforms without ever having caused any terrible noise, and that's when SpaceX considered using oil rigs as launch platforms. So how did SpaceX think about this idea? Well, this is not a really new concept, even in the field of space travel. The 1990s saw the founding of the company Sea Launch, which specialized in launching the Zenit rocket from a floating sea platform that was formerly an oil rig. This was no little rocket, despite the appearance that it was a fairly small operation. The Zenit could launch a comparable mass into orbit and was nearly the same size as the Falcon 9. Sea launch was fairly successful back in the day. However, a lack of flights and excessive operating expenses ultimately led to their bankruptcy. That being said, sea launch showed that launching from the sea has numerous advantages. Rockets usually avoid flying over populated areas when launching from standard launch sites like Cape Canaveral due to noise and safety concerns, so they typically travel over the ocean. This significantly reduces the range of orbits it is capable of reaching. Rockets must fly exactly above the equator and follow Earth's rotation in order to reach geostationary orbits. And that's where the oil rigs come into play. Launching from a sea platform allows SpaceX to reach for the achievement of any orbit. So where would these oil rigs be located? In 2020, SpaceX made headlines with its ambitious plan to convert two decommissioned oil rigs into floating launch platforms for the Starship program. Just a few miles away from their Boca Chica site is the well-renowned port of Brownsville, home to many oil rigs which operate out in the Gulf of Mexico. As it happened, everyone's attention was drawn to one particular oil rig at the beginning of 2020. The oil rig known as Deimos, named after a moon of Mars, was positioned in the port of Brownsville among the tanker ships. After further investigation, this oil rig used to be owned by a company called Valaris, which went bankrupt in 2020. They sold this oil rig and another one just like it to Lone Star Mineral Development after filing for bankruptcy. The other oil rig, called Phobos, was located in a port in a different part of Texas and was also named after a Martian moon. Considering that these rigs cost $515 million to build, Lone Star was able to acquire Deimos and Phobos for a mere $3.5 million apiece. But who was the enigmatic company that was executing this deal behind the scenes? It turns out that SpaceX owns Lone Star Mineral Development as a subsidiary. This verified SpaceX's intention to move forward with their proposed offshore launch platform. But how was SpaceX planning to convert these oil rigs to be able to launch and land starships? To get a better idea, let's take a closer look at the rigs SpaceX had just purchased. These rigs are semi-submersible and can be moved out to sea and anchored in place. With large ship-like hulls placed well below the surface, these rigs are much more stable and less affected by waves than SpaceX's current drone ships. Each rig has eight thrusters, each with a capacity of about 3,500 horsepower 
and measures 73 by 78 meters in width and length. Since these rigs operate many miles out at sea, they rely on their own power, which in this case is provided by seven enormous diesel engines. However, given that Elon Musk is spearheading this project, it appears probable that these will be replaced with a more renewable energy source, such as solar or wind power. Judging by SpaceX's previous renders, the launch platform will be fairly simple on top. They need a large space for the landing area, a tank farm to store propellants, and a large crane to lift and stack Starship. The large tower in the middle, known as a derrick, was used to support all of the heavy drilling equipment. At first, it may seem like this tower could be used as the foundations for the massive lifting crane. But underneath this tower is the moon pool, which is essentially a giant hole in the platform. The energy generated by Starship's engines will be incredibly potent during launch. Therefore, SpaceX will want to focus as much of that energy into the ocean so that it can be absorbed there rather than endangering the launch pad. It appears likely that SpaceX was going to take advantage of this moon pool by building the launch mount atop it, which will raise the engines above the surface of the water. However, despite the initial excitement, the oil rig conversion project ran into several hurdles that ultimately led to its cancellation. Here's a deeper look at the challenges SpaceX encountered. First was its engineering complexity. While seemingly like a clever repurposing effort, Converting the oil rigs for Starship launches turned out to be a much bigger engineering feat than anticipated. These massive structures were designed to withstand harsh ocean environments, but adapting them to handle the immense thrust and heat generated by the Starship's super-heavy booster proved to be a significant hurdle. The modifications required to ensure the rig's stability and safety during launch would have been extensive and time-consuming. Second was cost concerns. The initial calculations might not have fully captured the total expenses involved. While repurposing existing structures seemed cost-effective at first, the reality of refitting the rigs to meet the specific needs of Starship launches might have ended up being just as expensive, or even more so, than building new launch infrastructure on land. And third was a shift in priorities. As SpaceX development efforts ramped up, the Starship program itself became a complex and demanding undertaking. The oil rig conversion project, while initially promising, likely fell down the priority list as SpaceX allocated resources towards the more critical aspects of getting Starship operational. By 2022, with the focus firmly on Starbase development and Starship testing, SpaceX officially announced they were abandoning the oil rig conversion project. The two rigs, Phobos and Deimos, were subsequently sold to a new owner, marking the end of this innovative but ultimately unfulfilled chapter in SpaceX's launch platform endeavors. Thank you very much for watching. Let us know what you think about SpaceX abandoning this massive launch platform. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.